Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today, and this is one I'm going to try to finish off. And I have been putting some clips together over the last month. I first started looking into this probably over a month ago. And then my friends on the Lost History channel made a video about this, and I've just kind of taken my time and looked around on Google Earth. But this is the island of Sardinia, and on my channel I try to be as thorough as possible, try to give you a look at as many ancient sites as I possibly can, and I have now over a thousand videos, documented quite a few of them around the world. But this is a place I've never made a video on, and I encourage all you who like to use Google Earth to look around on this island because you can find some really fascinating things. And we will start in the very northwest part of the island, and this is maybe one of the most impressive structures on the island, and this dates back pretty incredibly to 5,600 years ago. This is called the Monte Diacote, and here it is, a three-step stone platform. You could say a mini pyramid, kind of, but from 5,600 years ago, 3,600 B.C. about, this was constructed. This is a very impressive structure, but here it is from ground level. Here is the pillar sticking up right here. Here it is a little closer. Pretty impressive ruin. Again, this was reconstructed a bit about uh, 35 years ago, I believe it was. Here is an altar, what they theorize was an altar. And also here, there is a large egg-shaped stone near the causeway, if you want to call it that, coming off this stone structure. Now we're going to go from the northwest part of the island down to the southwest part of the island, and this is a pretty impressive ruin down here. This is called the Naraga Sarucci, and however I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sure I will be corrected in the comments section. But this is an impressive ruin, and there seems to be a very ancient village nearby. If I can finally get us in here. But this place seems to be very fortified. We have many circular structures, and then a wall that is encompassing this whole site and you see here there are ruins just off to the west that are kind of getting lost to time here but you can clearly see them people theorize that this is where people left and this keeps on going over here you can see the ruins and even when you get over here to the road let me just show you one thing here if you go down to Google Street View, and looking back here, you can see the stonework underneath the vegetation. And if we swing around here, and on the other side here, if you look off into the distance, you can see some stonework right here. And these appear to be shaped stones that were cut here and put in here. But these ruins are getting lost to time here. This site here is called the Niraga Losa. This is seems to be a fortified circular enclosure, a triangular outer wall here. But these ruins are still there in pretty impressive form today. That's what it looks like from overhead. But here is the remains of that structure on Street View. But right down in this area here, there is a large hill or mound right here quite large and let's just go down on google street view here and take a peek but here is down by the base of it and you see the stonework in here and i'm not quite sure what we're looking at but this is a very large mound and up on top there is stonework up here some more stone ruins. What appear to be stone ruins to me when they're circular and appear to have some sort of formation. Now the age of these ruins probably are varied, but some of them could be very old. But a lot of places unmarked here that you can find on Google Earth. Some are pretty easy to locate. And right down here, this appears to be some sort 
of U-shaped hinge. And that appears to be very weird here, but I'm going to look at it on Google Earth here for the first time just to see what it looks like. Hmm. Appears to be stones coming up this way. Maybe something right under the ground here, but from ground level that appears to look fairly natural. But when you go to the overhead view and back out, but when you go to overhead here, this appears to be a man-made structure. But when you go down to Google Earth, it appears to be a natural hill. Here's a room called the Sioux Naraxi, and these are very impressive. And these are fairly unique, I guess. I have never seen ruins like this, but these, some of these go back a long time. Let's go down and take a peek at this one if we can. Here we are down on Street View. You get a good look at the view from this ancient structure. What remains today? Some pretty impressive stonework it looks like. But you notice in the background here, there is a pyramidal, almost a perfect pyramidal hill. Well, let's go look at that real quick because that intrigues me. But here is that site again. But let's just go across the valley here and take a look at that pyramidal hill. Now this is called the Reste del Castello. And there is a structure up on top of here. And I think this is fairly modern. But you notice this hill is perfectly symmetrical in its pyramidal shape. And this is just odd. This is a perfect pyramidal shaped hill. And it just doesn't fit with any of the other hills in the area. And here is what that hill looks like from down on Street View. Seems pretty uniformed and pyramidal shaped, but I guess it is a natural hill. Now let's just take a look at a few of these structures. And here you can see that pyramidal hill in the background. But the stonework is very impressive and maybe a couple different periods. But here is a tomb and that's what the lecture will be focused on. The houses of the dead of these people. Here is that first structure, that uh, ziggurat or little pyramidal type structure I showed you at the beginning. And these are very Gobekli Tepe-ish, if you want to go there. Here are some little tombs, big stones. Here are some spear points. Another one of those structures I showed you. And here is the inside of one of those structures. And this is pretty impressive building technique here. And I think Megalithomania UK uh, went inside of that structure and showed it in their video they did there. And I will leave some links below. Here is an overhead shot. These structures were very fortified and well built. Maybe some alignments built into them. Here is a little tunnelway. Here are some artifacts. These are pretty fascinating. Here is a boat, dogs, maybe a symbolic journey through the heavens. More artifacts. Four pillars, one main pillar in the middle. Here are some more structures, and I will leave the link for the Megalithomania UK video they did here. And they journeyed to this site here. And this is thousands of year old stonework, still in very impressive condition. But just some more looks at ancient Sardinia. The history here goes back, way back. They have things that are said to be giant's tombs here. Some more artifacts. Maybe this is the Batman of ancient Sardinia. But these circular structures are found throughout the island here. Some big, some small. And just some final looks at some of the bigger structures in Sardinia. These have been described as beehive type structures, but well fortified, well made, that is for sure. That was a look at some of the ruins on Sardinia. Now I'm just going to play a short clip from a lecture from Recording Archaeology. I have shared their clips before. 
They make their videos shareable so anybody can use them. If you have an ancient history channel, they have a lot of uh, lectures on different subjects. Sometimes it's good to include some information of people who have been studying this directly. But here is that brief lecture. I will leave the full link to the video below. And you all have a very nice day. I'm going to present some uh, results of a project which I've done in Sardinia, which is the uh, one of the big Italian islands in the Mediterranean. Uh, so I've been working there for several years, but the results I'm going to present now are results from uh, last summer season. So in Sardinia, the, the, the archaeology I'm interested in there are the rocket tombs. So these are chamber tombs, a bit similar to what we have here in Scotland, except that they are cut into the bedrock, so they are not built by megalithic. Uh, elements. So you can see here uh, on those pictures that they're usually found all together in symmetry. So usually in the scan of uh, limestone landscapes. So they are symmetries. They usually are quite complex in terms of architectural design. So you have a, a small plan here that shows the entrance and then usually you have an empty chamber and then the main chamber with decorations, carved decorations or painted decorations in them. And then you have additional small cells on the on the side of the main chamber where presumably the uh, the dead were deposited. Uh, so there are quite a lot of them in Sardinia. So three thousand uh, five hundred of these tombs, which are also known locally as Domus de Yanas, which means the House of the Fairies. Uh, and uh, they are interesting as well because of their decorations. So they are usually made to replicate houses so they have pillars they have symbolic doorways they have a half which is all everything is is carved onto the rock but they are really made to imitate um, uh, houses so houses at a smaller scale so you can see a picture of me inside one of them here so that's why as well there is all this you know modern methodology uh, sorry metho mythology about that they, these are the houses of small beings also fairies Anyway, so the case study we worked on two years ago, what two says, in the summer 2017, is a site called of Mezu and Montes. So it's a very typical Lake Neolithic Sardinian rocket tomb cemetery. You can see with the red arrow the cemetery is located here on the on the rock cliff. You see some of the openings of the of the tubes, but they are quite discreet in the landscape or the white. And you can see all the landscape around, so you have a, a mixture of limestone plateaus and then valleys. And this is quite a eroded landscape, but also quite a challenging one to, to field work in, in general. So, one of the first uh, steps we've done is to document the architecture and the art of the tomb. So, there are 17 tombs in the cemetery, each of them were 3D uh, modeled using photogrammetry, which is a pretty standard now, I think. Uh, but one of the issues with photogrammetry, as you know, is that they tend to create a floating model. So you have a 3D model, but you don't know where the north, the south, the top, the bottom. So you can just try to reorient manually your 3D model, but it's not very accurate. So that's why we integrated uh, targets on the, uh, the models, which were, for which we had a very accurate uh, GPS point because we were working with this uh, uh, portable differential GPS where which allowed us to have an accuracy of up to one centimeter and again this it's it's maybe technically simple but that's really something that is missing at the moment for those symmetry so what you have in the current documentations are usually small black and white contour maps of the tubes and that's pretty it so it's good to have this more contextual information and visuals about those tubes uh, so we, we use as well the 3D models to create, again, those more conventional styles, uh, but maybe more detailed plans of cross sections, so just to give you a few examples. Uh, so that's a plan of two, number one, if you recognize as well the, uh, the entrance, the main chamber, and then the cell, the various cells on the side. A cross sections as well, just with a human scale here, and the chamber, and the main chamber, are some details as well of the decorations, which you can also see too. Very nice photographs by my uh, local colleague Nicolas Castanque. 
Uh, working on this georeference model, we're also interesting to think about some archaeological questions as well, and one of them, which is a bit typical for megalithic uh, monuments or you know megalithic monuments in general, is about the orientation of the tombs. Uh, often there are you know, discussions on how the tombs are aligned to specific landscape features, so we wanted to kind of explore these ideas. Uh, those rocket tombs, they are very linear structures in terms of design, you know, they have the consistent succession of different rooms or chambers which are delimited by small doorways. So they're really thought out as really linear architectures and it's easy in a way to, to look at where the tombs are looking into because if you sit on the back of the chamber and you look through the alignment of those doorways, you have something like this here, you can see exactly where the the tomb is pointing at, but you can also double check this by you know, creating that just, just lines of the plan. And in this case, what was interesting is that the uh, we realized that the tombs were not aligned, they were not built you know, just perpendicularly across the rock face, which would make sense from a purely technical point of view. If you were to build a rocket tomb and you had a rock face, you would like your tomb to be, you know, expanding perpendicularly, but here they are slightly oblique, which suggests that they were interested in having a very specific orientations towards something in particular. So if you look at these pictures here, for example, some tombs are oblique that way, other tombs are oblique that way, and if you look at the bigger picture, uh, if you imagine all those tombs being that big, you know, laser guns, they are targeting, they are converging, towards the same point of the landscape, which is the, uh, the, this big plateau here called the mountain man, which is the, the big hill. So the, the tombs are here. Some of them are quite distant from each other, but they tend to converge towards this mountain man. 